Hello, so today we're going to be working on American academic writing tips. Yes, so much fun. So we're just going to be going through certain tips and instructions and uh, kind of like the basics um, and, and then some of writing an academic paper in the um, United States of American style. Uh, and so this is, um, it could be used all across the board, it just helps you to write a little better and it gives you some structure to follow. So we're going to start off with the structure of how you should write, and so we're going to start off with intro paragraph. Within an essay, if you're writing an essay, an academic essay, you should have an intro, some body uh, paragraphs, and then also a conclusion paragraph. Um, and so intro paragraph, body paragraphs, and then a, a conclusion paragraph. Uh, it also depends on the exact academic paper that you'll be writing. Um, when you get into higher academia, then it will start to change a little bit. Um, but this is kind of just across the board, the general way to write an essay. So intro paragraph. What you do is you start off with writing a couple topic sentences. Uh, at lower level, you could be a little bit more general um, and write about topic sentences that are way general about the world or make claims um, or just something that leads you into what you will be talking about. Um, you could just make a couple topics or topic sentences that will eventually lead into what is called your overview or your background. Um, and so basically, I'll give you an example. Say you're writing a paper about dogs and cats in Animals by this dude named John Doe. And so in, in the topic sentences, you can just say something like, dogs and cats have famously been known to uh, interact in certain ways with each other. Uh, we could see this in cartoons, TV shows, movies, in real life, etc, etc. Just something, some topic. And then give some background, some overview, right there, and just say something like, um, dogs and cats uh, in the world historically have done this and this with each other. And be a little bit more specific, you could say something like, dogs and cats often fight with each other some background, maybe some historical context, like say, you know, 2,000 years ago, people started seeing the relation between dogs and cats and how they would always fight with each other or something like that. Um, and then you, you finish it off with a thesis statement. So the thesis statement here, um, I just did a, a mock one. It is, in his work, Animals, there's a work, John Doe, the author, portrays a unique relation between dogs and cats. And so you're summing up what your claim is, and your claim in this case is that dogs and cats have a unique relation in John Doe's work, Animals. In the thesis, it's important to, to include the author as well as the work. And make sure to cite the work properly, whether it's quotations or it's italicized, it depends on the type of work that you will be uh, working with, um, depending on if it's a scientific paper, an article, philosophical essay, um, anything of the sort, or just a book, a poem, uh, anything literary, it will change. So just make sure to figure out what you'll be writing about. And then in the body paragraphs, you should start off with a topic sentence. Uh, claiming uh, this topic sentence will wrap together your body paragraph uh, or it, it will set it up to go uh, and so your first claim saying your first body paragraph say this could be the topic sentence it could be dogs and cat the relationship between dogs and cats is often a negative one uh, and then you can go on to say a concrete detail which is dogs and cats have an, are often, dogs and cats are angry with each other. And that could be going off of the broader category of negative, and what is negative about it? They are angry with each other, and that could be a concrete detail. 
And then you could back up the concrete detail with some commentary, just commenting on why they're angry with each other. Uh, they are angry with each other because such and such, or because such and such. Uh, more, you're not really, you're staying, you're straying away from uh, traditional just hardcore facts. You could say certain reasons why they are angry with each other, but it doesn't necessarily need to be super, super concrete. That's what the concrete detail is for. The concrete detail sets something up for you to talk about it, and that's what the commentary part is for. And then you would end, and then you could do that a couple times, concrete detail, commentary, concrete detail, commentary, and uh, in concrete details, you can also provide a quote, make sure you lead into the quote, say, in his, in his later years, um, John Smith wrote a work titled Cats and their famous relationship with dogs, where he said, and then you use the quote, such and such and such, and then you can comment on that. And then you use a, then you make a conclusion, wrapping all of that together, you could restate your thesis, but including what you spoke about within the rest of the paragraph. Just make sure it is cohesive and you get a finished feeling to it. And then you have your conclusion paragraph. In your conclusion paragraph, it's important to first summarize your body paragraphs. You could even just take their conclusion sentences and make them a little bit more uh, fitting for an overall conclusion paragraph. Or you can take uh, just a few of the key points and summarize them that summarize them within just sentence form. So make sure that they are cohesive and that they flow together and that they sound good and accurate and true to what you are trying to accomplish uh, in your argument or just in your paper in general. And then you finish off with, by restating the original thesis statement. So I showed it to you right here. So in the conclusion, make sure, restate this. So in this example, the thesis statement was, in his work, Animals, John Doe portrays a unique relation between dogs and cats. And so restated, so when it's restated in the conclusion, I did something like this. You can, you can do it as, as however you want. There's no structure necessarily to this. It's just stating the same thing that you said before using different words in more of a conclusion format, something that makes it feel accomplished or done. Um, and so this is the restated thesis. All throughout animals, we can now see the special dynamic between cats and dogs. See how it takes this original thesis and changes it up, uses different words, and gives it more of a finished feeling. And then, so just last additional tips that you have to, that you should keep in mind throughout your paper. First one, never start a sentence with a conjunction. Conjunctions are anything like and, but, yet, and all those things such like that. So, uh, so and so, you should never start a sentence with a conjunction. Don't start your sentence by saying, and cats and dogs will always fight. Say, cats and dogs will always fight. Don't say and. If you feel the need to say and, try to find a way to combine that sentence that you're trying to start with the sentence previously. It's, you can't, in, uh, in, in essays, it's not like you can never, it's not like it's illegal to start with a conjunction. It's generally not a good writing style, but it is possible, and you will see it occasionally, but it's, more safe for higher skilled writing because it's a very, um, it, it really just depends on what your sentence will be and generally just stay away from it. Number two, don't be literary when writing literal and vice versa. So don't be literary when writing literal, what's that mean? When, if you are writing a literary paper, if you're writing something say on a poem, or a novel, you should not try to be overly literal. Um, or say you are writing um, a more so, 
if you're writing a, a paper on a philosophical concept or a, on a, something discovered within science, a, a scientific article, say a psychological scientific article, for, for example, you should not try to be overly literary. You have to, within this context, you should, you should be able to present your point in a very matter-of-fact, literal way, backing up what all of your claims with evidence, especially in a philosophy paper or in a scientific journal. Uh, and so if you try to be literary, then you are actually detracting from the point that you were trying to make. You can use metaphor, there's no problem with that, but it, it should be metaphor in reference to the point that you are trying to make and you should still be able to back it up with actual evidence. Uh, again, depends on the situation, this isn't always the case, but when you are doing something literary, say you're writing a novel or writing a poem, don't try to be too literal, and if you're writing something literal, don't try to be too literary. Um, you can find mixes, you can find balances of these, but it's, it's good to really pay attention to what you're actually writing and not to fall into storytelling when you're trying to prove a point, or to fall into trying to prove a point when you're in storytelling. They don't mix very well. It is possible to mix them, but it's tough and just stay away from it. So, number three, try to start each sentence with, uh, each sentence in a paragraph with a different word. So, this one, uh, it's not absolutely necessary, but it's good to keep in mind because it will actually make your, the flow of your paper and the way that your paper sounds, it will make it sound very good and make it sound higher level. Um, so this is within a certain paragraph context. If you are using the same word to start off every sentence, it will sound atrocious. It will sound horrible. Um, and if you endeavor, if you try to start each sentence within a paragraph with a different word, it will actually make it sound very good and show that you are putting a lot, of, a lot more thought and effort into the paper. Fourth, and there's many others, but we're only doing four today, so four, Refrain from speaking in the first person, again, in most cases. So try, to start, try not to make statements like, I feel, or I believe, or I think it is this way, or I, um, I want this, or, I, or to me, it seems like it's this way. It's, all of that can be very mitigated speech, and it just does not come out well in a paper, especially if you're trying to prove a point. Uh, just try to stray away from including yourself into it. Um, it's all right to, to talk about certain things uh, within a paper from your stance, that's the whole entire point. Just try to refrain from using words like I and me. So. That's about it today. Again, it's just the basics and these are some just helpful tips. Uh, if you want to know more, then uh, maybe I'll come out with another one of these little videos. But thank you for joining me. My name is Bear and this is the Inspiring Guy.